All right, we are live streaming on Facebook, on our Red or Green Books Facebook page. Welcome everyone to the March 2024 Red or Green Books author talk uh, for our book club. Super excited uh, to be welcoming Emily Cortez uh, back to the Red or Green Books and her incredible book, Queen of Swords, cover art, of course, by Shane Maynard from uh, Guerrilla Poets. Uh, super, super excited to have uh, to have this book uh, in our collection. Uh, it went, I don't know if you know this, Emily, but uh, we had an order of Library in Atlanta bought all of our books, uh, the full collection of our Red or Green Books uh, current titles. And so your book is now in the library in Atlanta. Like how cool is that, right? Uh, so it's, it is very exciting to, to have, um, to know that, right? The, these incredible wow. authors and their books are are in places that they never, <laughs> they probably never would have been. So I'm yeah. super excited. We're going to uh, roll out that whole program. Awesome. Here comes Quinn. So we do have uh, some debut poets uh, coming in the house and joining us today. Very, very exciting to continue to um, move on the foundation that you and so many other poets have laid in this organization. So I'm super, super happy to welcome everyone. Uh, so um, Emily, why don't you just uh, kind of take some time, introduce yourself, talk about the book, um, and then I'll talk about a little bit about the special that we are running this month in the, mo in the month of March for your book. And uh, welcome, Quinn, and I'll just, I'll turn that to you. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, very much for the intro. Um, yeah, my name my name is Emily Cordes. I have um, this is uh, I'm going to be talking about my book Queen of Swords today. It's uh, my second time publishing with Red or Green. Uh, my first collection, Armful of Poppies, was um, one of the, uh, the was one of the 2021 uh, debut poets launch, and I'm really lucky to have you know had the opportunity to uh, release another one under underneath uh, uh, and under under Red or Green. Um, so Queen of Swords is. Um, it's inspired by the tarot. It not every poem in it is about the tarot, but it uses the tarot as a thematic and structural motif. And it was written over the course of two years that were really a very big period of personal growth and artistic growth for me. And the Queen of Swords is kind of this this symbol and this metaphor for me of a woman who uses her her words and her intellect as a as a force for truth and a force for expression and. But and also the reminder to as you're like stepping into your power, also, you know, lead with your heart and and keep humanity at the center of all you do. So um, the way it's structured is there's there's four sections um, for those who know anything about the tarot. Um, the there's two parts of the tarot deck. You've got the uh, major arcana, which is more like sort of archetypal um, symbol cards like the fool, the sun, the lovers and so forth. And the minor arcana, which is four suits structure more like a tradi traditional uh playing card deck you've got um you've got uh cards one through ten and four court cards king queen knight and page and each um section of the minor arcana is represented by a different symbol or element and related uh the thematic content for for that so each section in this book is structured similarly and it's got um 56 poems one for each uh card in the uh minor arcana and a standalone poem for the fool so it was kind of a little more high concept than my previous book but it was fun to sort of use tarot as like a inspiration for that because i find the tarot is very richly symbolic and it's a great source um, of artistic inspo in uh, for a lot of people actually and you you wrote one poem for every card of the deck which is just like awesome it's so mind-blowing you guys um, if you don't follow tarot, if you're not familiar with um, the tarot deck and how it works, this still is going to be an incredible book for you. Yeah, uh, it is almost like a crash course in tarot, um, but it, it's a lot of fun. And the book has, you know, sections and it has this beautiful artwork that has been um, inputted into the book for each of um, the the uh, micro decks within the 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 main deck. And so it's very, very interesting. Uh, the book is not small. It is a thick book. I yeah. mean, it's got 155 numbered pages. Okay, uh, so it is it's not it's not a skimpy book by any means. It's it's very thoughtful. Um, Emily's taken a, a great deal of time to put together something like this. It's it's interesting to read. You don't it you know so it's not like a textbook where you're like halfway through the first poem you like zone out. 
it'll actually pull you through the the work itself stands alone any page you land on uh you could read and it would be a wonderful piece uh the book is available it normally retails um did we say 20 emily I think I think we said I think we said fifteen and with shipping it's twenty I think that was the okay the, the, so the, normally normally the book would retail at fifteen uh, plus shipping and handling the um, the coupon for the month of March is five dollars off the coupon code is Queen so if you go to the website and you check out for this book and you put in a coupon code Queen uh, it will give you five dollars off of this book in the month of March it book club is an incredible opportunity for folks to stock their library each month by buying a book uh, at a discounted rate all of the sales of the book through the website this month go directly to Emily so you want you know if you want to support the artist you know please do that uh, she'll sign the book and send it to you even. And so it's, it's this wonderful opportunity to get an incredible book. And the, and the cover art, the, the artwork that Shane did is just gorgeous for this book. Yeah. I mean, your first book was beautiful also. But this is beautiful. You know, like she, she just, she rocks it out. She's got a great um, style. And so mm -hmm. you can absolutely get this book today uh, for $10 plus shipping and handling. Um a little bit so you know the way that today is going to go you know we're talk a little bit with emily about herself her journey in the book and then she's going to go into her full 30 minute feature set at the end we're going to do a q a so if anyone has questions specifically for emily about the book about poetry anything that you want you're welcome to ask uh at the end of the show of course she is welcome to decline answering uh mm -hmm. i have told her she is not mandated to answer anything uh and so that's totally okay if you don't want to answer, but if y'all have questions you can think of between now and the end of the show that you would like to ask Emily, uh, you are welcome to uh, bring those questions at the end. So um, what do you have? So Emily, you're more than just a poet. Um, you, <laughs> you're more than just a spoken word artist. You do a lot of stuff. You're in Brooklyn. Um, what do you have going on right now? How can people find you, follow you, all that good stuff? Um, yeah, I'm actually going to drop all my uh, links and info in the chat. Yeah. So um I am, in addition to um, being a poet, I'm an actress, and I also create some of my own plays. I do arts management as well, uh, theater, blogging, um, very, you know, theater focused, but I do a little bit of everything. And you can follow along with uh, whatever I'm up to on the links I just posted here on my Instagram, my Facebook. I do, I do post a lot. Um, yeah, and... Uh, I've I live in I live in Brooklyn, New York. Um, it's 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 just a really great spot, you know. I'm and I'm very lucky that I've also been um, the neighborhood I'm in, Ditmas Park, Brooklyn, has um, an emer a pretty emergent lit scene. I've been getting a little more involved on the local level too. I just did a, I just did a book event at a Lofty Pigeon Book, which is a small bookstore um, in my neighborhood, and I I really love kind of getting to sort of plant my flag a little bit more locally in addition to having this, you know, very much broader online community too. I just love it. Um, yeah. And, and by the way, I still have the thing that you brought for me at the New Mexico poetry, at the uh, New York oh. poetry festival. It, uh huh. I still have the big pink thing. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, I, I'm not getting rid of that. I still got it. Uh, and if you're not doing anything in September, you should come to the New Mexico poetry summit. Uh, we're going to have so many amazing poets uh, here. I don't know if you've seen the lineup, but there are some incredible poets. We got New York poets coming in as well. Uh, so if you've never been to New Mexico, think about coming. You should absolutely do it. Um, we're going to, our venue is at this place called Harwood Art Center. And uh, it's this huge three-story um, old girls academy, like a boarding school. And they've turned it into a, a theater and art and exhibit um, space. And so that's where we're, where we're going to have our main event. And I think of you every time because they have a theater downstairs and I'm like, I want to do an adult puppet show so bad. Like, <laughs> one day this is gonna happen. One day this is gonna happen. <laughs> one day it's gonna happen. We got. I want to do like an adult, like an adult uh, stage play, like poetry stage play it would be yeah. so fun. Um, and so we, we got to figure something. We got to get it on Broadway totally. somehow. Uh, but let's go. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and read um, Emily's bio and read one of the reviews from her book. 
Again, if you go uh, to the Red or Green Books website, Red, R-E-A-D, if you go to the Red or Green Books website, you click, uh, you check out her book, put the coupon code QUEEN in there, uh, you get $5 off through the month of March. And of course, all those proceeds go to the artist. So please, please, please buy the book. Uh, let her get, uh, let her get some moolah and she'll send you a signed copy. All right. Emily Cordes is a Brooklyn, New York based actress, writer, theater maker, and arts manager. She hails from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and is a graduate of Smith College and Columbia University. She has performed in numerous plays, films, and web projects, and is the co-founder of, of the devised theater group, Tapestry Collective. <clears throat> Her debut poetry collection, Armful of Poppies, was published by Red or Green Books in 2021. Emily is a former employee of the New Eureka Poets Cafe and an active member of New York City's spoken word community. Um, Elise Versella, which I got to meet in New York, I, I, like hugging Elise was awesome. She's just amazing. And her mom, oh my God, her mom is amazing too, right? I love meeting these poets in person. So Elise Versella uh, writes, with inspiration from the tarot spread with an adept hand, Emily Cordes weaves a beautifully wrought collection of poems about our times. This collection is a proclamation, a toast, exultant, despite the fears and chaos that surrounds us. So I will ask, I will invite everyone to unmute their mics and welcome up our featured reader for book club, March, 2024, the one and only Ms. Emily Cordes. <laughs> Thank, you. We go. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. All right. Yeah. I'm going to read a couple of uh, poems from this here book. Um, so the title one, is called Queen of Swords. And um, in addition to the um, the card itself, one of, uh, I was inspired by um, one of uh, my mentors in the uh, in the poetry community, um, Eric Words Maldonado, AKA Advocate of Words. He has the saying that uh, poets kind of, our gift is sort of like a sword that we carry around. We can use it to knight you or we can use it to cut you. And yeah, so uh, inspired by that and just, you know, the, the archetype of the Queen of Swords, I'm going to read the title poem, Queen of Swords. In the wise words of wise words, poets wield their gifts like swords, to knight the worthy or cut as they choose. Use justly, they'll illuminate. Use carelessly, can obfuscate. Use cruelly, can impale or maim or bruise. I've been the Queen of Cups. Chalice offered up in love, been queen of wands with fiery torch ablaze. I've nurtured empress gardens and unwound the devil's snares, but this tower's crumbling and it's time to raise. So I'll unsheath my sword, hoist it high and say no more, to protect or sever as befits the day. Toxic tongues hiss in my ear, wormy thoughts of hate or fear. I shrug them off. My court is not their place. And I'll be just, but won't adjust my borders to house bullshit from fools who won't accept their proper station. And my queendom will be beacon for my kindred cross the globe, the people of the quill and brush and stage. And with our sword pens brandished, we'll inscribe in air and fire a thousand different worlds of our creation. Thank you, that was Queen of Swords. So uh, this next one, um, as I mentioned, not every poem in the collection is, is explicitly about a, a tarot card, but a great many are inspired by that or contain um, imagery from the deck. So um, the very first time I got COVID was um, April 1st, 2022. And I'm just like, this, this is like, this could not be more like fitting. So I, I wrote um, this, uh, this poem called April Spool. The virus finally got me the morn of April 1st, blinked numbly at the plastic strip, half thought the universe would bust out with the cameras proclaiming jokes on you, but coronated queen still reigns and now I play the fool. The last year has been an exercise in faith and hope and trust. Wild hearts burst forth from boxes, half crazed by wanderlust. Dreams set adrift like paper planes, not knowing what will come. Will we rise with the updraft or ever downward plunge? 
For every act of courage demands an act of risk. Each step toward greatness edged adjacent to harsh, rocky cliffs. The hound dogs nipping at your heels could bring complaints or wisdom. But still you blithely greet the void, your compass intuition. Your knapsack packed with just the facts on flim flimsy pole uplifted. It's up to you the ways you'll use the assets you've been gifted. And when we fall, we ask ourselves if retributions come for motley thrown on carelessly, self-rendered blind and dumb? Are we mere pawns tied to the wheel that callous fate has spun? Or has cold justice now decreed our game's been falsely won? We make the road by walking, decisions with each step, humility the barrier by which we stay protected. Admitting limitations, bow head and stand corrected, Beginner's mind and gratitude for knowledge we've collected. And gallows humor threaded through for coxcomb bells air toll for you. So crowned ones, heed your honest fools for therein lies redemption. Thank you. So this next one is called Seabird. Um, I do a lot of like online workshops as well when I have the chance, which is really fun. It's a great, you know, kind of opportunity to, um, try some new styles and get inspired. This one I wrote, um, this is a while ago. I think I wrote this back in like July of 2021. I was a workshop with uh, Paul Latour, AKA Paul Conqueso. And this is, uh, this was inspired by a lot of things, including just kind of the central experience of the beach and the ocean. And it's called Seabird. I live inside my head. It's no surprise that flesh gets left behind. The world I walked in never felt that safe. So like a wayward bird, I take to sky. Hollowed out my bones so I could fly. Hollowed out my insides so their churn wouldn't distract me. Hollowed my heart just enough to keep the pain at bay. Pinata made of crepe paper mache with sugar guts spilled out and stitched back up. But sometimes when the light's just right and the breeze is a fond lover, I remember even seabirds pause in flight and hover over beachside towns where caramel sunshine spills across the hours and air's salt butter sweetness we devour, mounting thermals like steep coasters over midway rides, their cries commingling with shrieks of delight, the clinks and pops of buzzing arcade nights and murmuring between soft cool like fresh clean sheets the heartbeat of the ocean's lullaby but i a foolish seabird live just barely in between bound to land but looking skyward caught betwixt the air and sea wings won't hold aloft much longer but the ether calls to me give me a kind place to land remind me that my feet aren't poor substitutes for feathers but the roots that go beneath and descent from greater heights can become a graceful dive, not just a storm-tossed wreckage of defeat. For treasures left behind by the gracious ocean tides are meant for those brave seekers on the beach. Thank you. And um, this next one is called Exposure. Uh, there's a lot of things that I've written in here about like the artistic process in general and sort of the bravery and the vulnerability and all that can sort of come with sharing your work. And I think like having in the process of writing my second book, having already and kind of living into the process of sharing my first one, I think that was a lot, a lot on my mind. And I think a lot of the poems in here reflect this. So this one's called Exposure. It's easier to flash a bit of skin than share your heart. Tassels twirling, grins lascivious because striptease is an art. Play the game of truth or bear. Keep them begging for the parts. Left implied through winks and gestures. Poker faced, a queen of hearts. Mistress of your own dominion. Cast your glamour like a charm. When the image you've concocted turns into a suit of armor and your body's now a weapon aimed at everyone that's harmed you. Stand outside naked, you'll die of exposure. When the world gets so cold, better that no one knows you. So you skate on the surface when the lake's frozen over, 
because you know if you deep dive, you'll freeze to the bones. When the wind knocks the doors down and nobody's home, the unadorned truth leaves you standing alone. It's a danger to stand in your glory and brokenness. Part the curtain and give backstage tours at the show. Grant an all access pass. Share the pulleys and ropes that you pull just to get here. You pray and you hope that the gifts that you offer aren't cast off as broken, discarded as trinkets, di sorry, disregarded as trinkets, discarded, unopened. That's the chance that you take when your nude turns to naked. Will the ones who once cheered you turn rough and abrasive? But a spirit can't rise when it's covered, ashamed. So strip yourself joyfully, step out on stage, ass and tits and fierce soul proudly put on display and a finger and smile in salute to the haters. Cause the ones who don't care have no rights to your radiance and exposures the ticket price of true creation. Thank you. So this one actually, um, this was written uh, for um, Red or Green has an amazing anthology called, um, call, called um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the name of the gun anthology. Um, Marissa, remind me. American Graveyard. American Graveyard. Oh, Jesus. I cannot believe I forgot that. American Graveyard. Yeah. Um, and uh, ho hopefully a second one out as well. But it's all, they're all poems inspired by gun violence. This was one that I, that I wrote, um, did make it into this round of American Graveyard, but I put it into my book. Um, it's called Mother Revolution. And I will find this somewhere. Here we go. Okay, Mother Revolution. Gun smoke clouds and shroud our nation. Hearts ignite with righteous rage. Lower chakras set ablaze. Fighting to survive, create. My uterus spits fire like a semi-automatic. Is that why you want to regulate it? The power of the crease compels you. Be the ones to end this hell you've made. As bodies pile and living ones are weaponized and children cower under desks afraid. Hour long walks to quell my anguish. Earblads busting Toriamos. Small respite from the pain reverberating through every news feed. Shots ignited, broadcast round the world as Mother Revolution plays on repeat. And all along the watchtowers, the night horses and the black mares steady themselves for the outcome, for the strange days to come. Life these days hurts like a mother. Thoughts return to my own mother. Her generation forced in youth like sitting ducks to air raid duck and cover. And feeling sadly glad she's not around to have to lock another classroom door against attackers and scared kids alike. Hearts employed as twisted decoys, admission tickets of the highest price to barricaded spaces, souls and minds shell-shocked out of complacency or thrust once more into the public eye. Each theater, school, grocery store, and everyday arena where we fight, or grandstands for more stagey faith revivals, where thoughts and prayers and showmanship, quick fix displays of remedy, obscure the truth, stall progress every time. Each profiteering prophet, a reverse messiah rendering the sighted blind. Thinking of the mother Gaia, she is weeping for her children. Wars and violence shake her body, even in her own exhaustion. Through exhaust-choked lungs, she calls upon us, be the better angels. Her weathered hands reach out in supplication to cease fire and like embers rise above. The ancients in their wisdom got it right. Creatrixes destroy and foster life and the bodies that can bring you into being will annihilate you as we take to the streets, reclaim our rights. Each teardrop shed in our collective fury will turn to a tsunami, turn the tide. For the mother, she is watching, keeping tally of your crimes and our revolution will be televised. <laughs> Thank you.
Um, okay, so this next one is called Gazpacho. Uh, this is a, I'm a big fan of the singer Amanda Palmer, um, amazing solo artist and also front woman for the Dresden Dolls. And she has a metaphor um, that she writes in her autobiography about art being like Gazpacho and the contents of one's art being like the ingredients. And some people like blend up their personal life very finely into their work. Others are more like overtly confessional. So I kind of took that metaphor and ran with it. This is called Gazpacho. I borrow this metaphor like sugar from my neighbor. Arts like a gazpacho, and your life is the tomatoes, onions, peppers, cilantro. Some folks mix it smooth, blend it unrecognizable. Others throw the whole garden, fresh plucked, roughly chopped on the table. I've never been comfy with my truth on the line. It's unprocessed and it's messy. You can't shoot it unrefined. Gotta strain away the pulp, mash it up and pulverize. Stomp down and distill it till it's something you'd enjoy, polite, at dinner time. Goes down easy, a digestive. Won't upset any stomach or derail any diet. Your paleo, your keto, your oh no, here we go, not again. Need some cheese to line my stomach for this girl's wine. So I season with apologies, like my vegan food dished up to omnis. I know it's a hard sell. You might not like what I like, but it tastes the same or pretty close. If you just close your eyes, so just give it a try. As I bat my eyes, stir the batter and try to butter up your eye rolls, hoping like that same cold soup at Lisa Simpson's barbecue, it won't get fed to dogs while others feast on flesh. Cause with salad at a potluck, you don't win friends. It's a matter of taste. You could be the sweetest peach like Ms. Von Teese, seated like a charming garnish on the rim of a martini. And there'll always be someone who just won't eat. The fruits of my orchard might be bittersweet, acquired tastes, but I've worked too hard to tend these seeds. Fed the soil with tears and prayers and they don't come cheaply. So don't yuck my yum, I can't always be pleasing. Switching toppings with crowds, always customized neatly, but like pizza, deep dished, deadpan, or cr crust sprouted and live. Even when I'm bad, I'm good. And my words are dollar slices served up for my people or my grandma's pit cells warm from the iron to feed you. No traps here, just love for the honeys I see. Stir it up in your tea, soothe your soul and body. And if I'm not your cuppa, that's just fine by me cause life's a buffet, pick and choose what you take. And everyone here's got a place at this feast. Okay, um, I'm gonna read, uh, one more before I go into a little bit of a audience participation. Nothing too scary. Don't be afraid. Um, this one's called Tandava. This was written after uh, I am, am belong to the um, ecstatic dance community here at NYC, which is basically just kind of like freestyle community hippie dancing. Um, sometimes they'll do it outside. Sometimes they'll do it indoors. But it's it's just so much fun. And this was inspired by a new year's dance I went to in a park um uh, it was like new year's day unseasonably warm like when we were just coming out of omicron so this is called tandava january 2nd finds me outdoors dancing under cloudy brooklyn skies boots mud caked souls ecstatic like our woodstock predecessors bless curse to witness interesting times Feet charting out intentions as my head's unspooling poems, welcoming a year so young and infinitely old. Three sixties spun on this high fifties day. Knit hoodies, fingerless gloves, fresh boosters and KN95s, our prayer thin barriers as the oceans and the numbers surge and rise. Spines ripple and arms undulate, but the knot between my shoulder blades won't leave. Can't shake the past from off my back. Should charge rent for how long that monkey stayed. Another page turns. Strange how little changes. My 34th found me in this same park. Slam jamming to Nirvana, masked and joyful. Hope rippling through the mild November dark. Are we brave or merely brazen or just stupid and contagious? Dancing rings round wilting roses spiraling toward life or death with every passing day. In India, they say, the great god Shiva dances ringed with flames. 
poise gracefully between rebirth and sheer annihilation. When his dance starts, the world will terminate. But other versions say, in motion he sustains us. When he stops is when it ends. So cosmic DJs keep that music playing. Spin galaxies and chakras like turntables. Can't fall asleep at wheels or at the decks. And till our last day comes, gods and creators will dance each new beginning till the end. Thank you. So one thing that I've actually kind of discovered with this book is that um, like a tarot reading, it likes to be shared according to the energy of the group. So we're going to do a little bibliomancy here. Um, if folks can either type type in the chat or shout out a number between 1 and 151. Okay, we got Quinn with 27. I'm going to read the poem on that page. If anyone, I'll probably do like maybe like two or three if anyone else wants to give some numbers, but we'll do, okay, we got 27 and we got 21. All righty. Let me see who, what does what 27 got for us? Oh, Original Grace. This one's pretty. Um, okay. No morning hours sweeter than those cocooned in bed and folded in soft limbo of twilight consciousness before the weight of waking life, of memories, of guilt, regrets, snaps dream threads and reality descends. Each morning's a baptism in the rain clouds or pale light. You are everything and nothing all at once. Unbound and naked as you were before life marred your flesh. Each cicatrice a mark in wet cement. And you hardened like the concrete, ossifying with each onslaught, braced yourself against the tempests, till the collar you turned upward became a noose entangled round your neck. We are born blankest slates, resplendent in our grace, but now no less the blessed for our scars and salvation's excavation, not a rescuing from sin, but a process of unearthing, a lesson in unlearning, a journey of returning to who you once were and who you've always been. Thank you. So this one's numbers game. Okay, yeah, I think I wrote this for, I wrote this for my, for my birthday a couple of years ago. If age is just a number, then birthdays are a numbers game, playing time like our Xbox, each year a level conquered, achievement unlocked, ignoring the tick of our heart's finite clock, timer set to expire, shake limbs, shrug it off. I'll leaf through each year's album, try not to be afraid, when the shock of biology laughs in my face. Mom, upon those same decades that I was a maid, holds me wide-eyed and hiding, but I've found a new way, soaring higher and higher as I birth books and plays, mama goddess to friends, torty cat as my baby, brewing tea, reading tarot, every lost soul soothed daily, and like dad, won't retire, cast from birth as type A, eyes on prizes, horizons, and ultimate days. Played it fast, young and dumb, taking boys home from clubs, but Dodge Club 27, now with legends, I run. Not quite Heinz 57, but I've infinite flavors. 32 kinds and then some. Try them all, bitch, I'm tasty. Because we're basking like robins in our finest of days. Prime of life, Miss Jean Brody, our cremes fire like brulee. And like rule 34, no exceptions here, baby. Grateful for every number, each day under the sun. Etches fine lines with time, but it's denied to some. Because this numbers game isn't one anyone wins. So we'll round every base and into home skid. Drink in hand, wild and dirty, screaming out, holy shit, what a long, insane, wonderful journey it's been. Okay, so uh, I got just one more. Gonna end it on a bit of a celebratory note before we go into interview mode. Um, provided I can find it. So it's St. Patrick's Day for all who celebrate and... Uh, I invite you all to take your beverage of choice if you have one. If not, just raise your fists. This one's called Cheers. All right. Arriba. Raise your glass. Fill it up. Heads lifted to the sky. Hearts opened up. Full of love for the ones who got our backs and got our fronts. Keep us waving, not drowning when the clouds erupt. Abajo. Get low. Throw it down. May the freaks and the mystics come bless this round. You and me. Spill the tea. Feel the pulse in the ground. Pour a drop in respect for the ones not around. Al centro. 
to the middle where we meet, to the circles we form, can't stop the beat, cause we're living it up and the days are sweet. Building fires, all can gather around, come on and feel the heat. By then thrall, toss it back, bottoms up. This one's for us all, so raise your cups. Pound it down for the community that fills us up. May our glasses never empty, and here's to us. Cheers, y'all. This is non-alcoholic. It's a little too early for the for the sauce, even even though it's even though it's afternoon in New York. I'm not drinking this early, man. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you all so much. Thank you. Awesome. I mean, what a great reading! It's phenomenal reading. I love it, and it is St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone who's uh, out there and and hanging out. So yes, let's go and thank you, Quinn, for that number, uh, so that we could we could hear that wonderful poem. If you want to get a copy of Queen of Swords, go to the website redorgreenbooks.com. Red R E A D. Check out the book, put it in your cart, and then put the coupon code Queen uh, in there for five dollars off. So let's go. Uh, super, super exciting uh, to be able to, to do that. Emily will send you a signed copy of her book. Uh, so let's support the author. Let's support uh, the artist. Let's support the press. Let's keep going. And and yes, I mean, to your to your point, Emily, American Graveyard, right, calls to end gun violence is a huge uh, thing that we're going to be starting. We're looking next year at being able to do um, art installations uh, mm. for uh, of poets and poetry and, and artwork from poets about um, our experiences or our interpretation of gun violence. So it is definitely uh, a necessary program uh, that we're gonna be looking uh, forward to doing at Red or Green Books. So if you would like to grab your copy, uh, get, get it. Uh, don't wait, don't wait till the end of the month. You guys, it's only halfway through the month. So you've got plenty yeah. of time uh, to order the book and, and she'll send it to you and she'll send a signed copy. Uh, all right, so usually, so start thinking y'all if you wanna ask Emily any questions today. Uh, you can type them in the chat or raise your hand. That's fine. Uh, I usually, I love to ask poets this. Uh, and we talked a little bit about this during your book release party. Um, but what was your favorite thing about creating this book? Um, I think, I think it was just kind of fun, like, um, compiling different material for it. I mean, I think once I had sort of started to have the intention to write 56 poems. And then it was kind of more like a, a build up to the finish line of that and, and kind of just finding like, okay, what's, what's some new stuff I could write for the book or new kind of things I could, I could put into it. Um, I, I'm lucky that I belong to like a bunch of different like groups on, on Facebook and Instagram, including um, shout out to, there's a group called 3030 Poetry, uh, National Poetry Writing Month is April and they give you a prompt every day for 30 days. And that's just such a great excuse to just like throw caution to the wind and just kind of like try some new stuff. Never have written all 30, but a lot of the stuff I had written from that made it into this book. So just kind of finding new opportunities and new stuff to like put in there. That was, that was a lot of fun. And I think also just the creative process of it, like kind of, discovering like how this book like wanted to evolve and what what the shape it sort of wanted to take it's always so fascinating to just see the life something takes on it's so true right especially for those who have never experienced tarot they don't know anything about tarot the book is really insightful uh is so i hope it inspires people to at least be curious and ask questions whether or not it's something you have any experience with it is um it's very interesting. It's, it's fascinating um, how you've correlated the poems to each of the cards. So I, I encourage you, you know, if you're like me and you're someone who loves learning and loves growing and loves constantly like diving into new things, this is a great book if you don't know anything about tarot because it will uh, definitely bring you into that and pull you into like, well, maybe I want to know more about this uh, to at least do some extra research. It's super fun. Um, what was the most challenging part of writing this book? Well, I think as you can attest to just the editing <laughs> process, like we, we kind of, we, we went through a lot of like, it, it, the finished product looks so beautiful. And I'm really glad that we put in like all the extra time and detail work to make it, to make it happen. But like, we had like issues with like the printer, just getting like all the, all the, like, all the like kind of like visuals and stuff lined up. And it was a lot of like, kind of fine tuning and back and forth of like, how's this going to look with pag pagination and layout and all the minutia. And it's like, it's kind of the unsexy detail work that ultimately it does lead to a much, a much like stronger and, and, and better finished prod product. But you know, it's like when you're kind of in the weeds with all of that, it can get a little like, Oh my God. 
but you know, I think that's just that comes with the territory with publishing. You gotta, you got you gotta do a lot of you gotta do a lot of weeding and gardening and stuff before it's like really kind of in its in its finalized form. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, folks who've never published a book, they you know, it, you don't really understand all the things that it takes to produce <laughs> this. It's a lot. There's a lot of people who had a hand in making this book come to life and a lot of hours that it took to make it. Uh, and so the debut authors this year are going to be working on uh, seeing that, uh, what, what all that means, taking, you know, a, a regular computer document and shrinking it to a book size and then combing through it and polishing it and making it really fit the vision of what it is you're wanting to convey in the book. Uh, it's a process. Um, but I'm, I'm curious because, you know, you're a return author uh, and I'm so super stoked to have now done your second book was it any different um opening the box for example or like sending it to print or you know like like how was it the second time around doing this book compared to the first book um I, I think I think obviously the I mean this was exciting you know obviously just like getting it out there in in print um and I, I think the first time there's just that huge huge rush of novelty and this time it was kind of a different animal because like when I published Armful of Poppies, my first book, it was part of, you know, the, like the 10, 10 winter poets uh, launch uh, uh, in 2021. So I was sort of having the debut with a lot of other people as part of the group. There was a lot of like more fanfare and more like structured kind of release stuff around that. And here it was a little more kind of, it was just my, my own book. So it was a little more, it was a little more like kind of like a slow landing, a slow release, like, like it was you know, kind of a little, it was exciting. It was great, but it was, it was kind of maybe a little more isolated, a little more grassroots. And I kind of found that it, it, it wasn't like boom, straight out the gate. It was like sort of a slow build of momentum as I was sharing it and, and distributing it. And I think it was also cause like the red or greens, you know, sort of distribution model had changed a little bit too. Like I remember with the first book, you just shipped everything to us directly to distribute. And now people can like order it off the website. So I haven't done as like, I'm still, I still have a lot of like copies of my own that I'm distributing, shipping out on my own, but folks can also just purchase it on the website. So there was like a little bit of that distance, like, like people would be like, oh, I bought your book. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know you, you got it. So there, there's definitely like, I, I think it's kind of like the sophomore album sort of experience, but it, it's, it's, it's no less, you know, exciting. It's just kind of like a different kind of exciting, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Right. I feel I feel that way a lot about, um, you know, wh when I did subsequent books, uh, it's it's a learning process. And it really is a testament to like the foundation you laid as as one of the contributing authors in our very first year. I mean, this year we are slated to publish our one millionth word, Emily. <laughs> Like, how freaking cool is that, right? Uh, to be part of this little fledgling uh, female forward press, right, that does these things that are very outside the box, that are really breaking rules. And I think it, it's changing. It, it should be changing, at least anyway, the way authors are paid, the way that the authors get to retain the rights to their work. Um, all of these things we're doing, I, I think, are very groundbreaking in the publishing world. And so to see the evolution of the press, you know, now with your second book and wow there's, there's so much more infrastructure you know than originally there was because when we started we you know we're just starting anytime you're starting anything it's 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 a slow process but now to be able to look back at it and say i was part of the million the million word journey um my books are in the legacy of this organization and our hope is to continue the legacy work of all of these writers, you know, especially the first 20 um, who we launched in 2021. I mean, you were the first year that we were ever open that we yeah. started this, right? Your work along with so many other incredible poets uh, really laid the foundation for poets like, you know, Shockey's in the house, Quinn's in the house, Whispers in the house. She's part of Red or Green Books now. You know, even Jaw, you know, Jaw's here. He wrote the foreword for American Graveyard. He's a gun violence survivor. And so having all of these people now coming into this organization, they're coming here because a lot of work you did uh, in laying the foundation, you and all of the 2021 poets laying that foundation for other poets to come 
um, and be able to find a home here. And so thank you for being part of this family. Thank you for coming back with your second book. Like, I'm so excited that you're on this journey. I'm going to let everyone know when we hit that million word and we'll do a big party. We'll do a big celebration. Uh, we'll homage everyone who has um, had work published here uh, because it's just, yeah, I mean, it really is a legacy, a legacy of work that, that y'all are, have done so get her book right support the press support uh her book queen of swords you can get a signed copy this month five dollars off go to the press uh website check out put the uh, coupon code queen uh, i will send emily your information and have her send you a signed copy and all of the proceeds this month go straight to the author so you know support her get this incredible book for five dollars off <clears throat> does anyone have any questions for Emily, anything that they want uh, to know about her doesn't necessarily have to be poetry related. It could be, um, you know, stage play related. It could be Emily related. <laughs> I need to, I need to come back to New York. I need to come to Brooklyn. Brooklyn was the only borough outside of Staten Island that I did not visit when I was there. Uh, so I would love, love, love to come back and um, and go back to, to New York City Absolutely. and go to Brooklyn <laughs> and see that. Show you around, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll let I'll let anyone decide if they um, if they want to uh, ask a question. Uh, book club is every month here at Red or Green Books. It is the third Sunday of the month at 1 p.m. Eastern, unless it's otherwise announced if there's some sort of a time discrepancy. Next month, we have the one and only Rick Spisak. Um, you know, Rick has been undergoing chemotherapy uh, for the past couple of months. And so we're really excited to have Rick back uh, and to be able to talk about his book, Stone Poetry. And just to give you a sneak peek at all of the poets coming up this year, we got Kimberly Anderson, Torin B., uh, Edward Galt, Quinn Collard, Laura Lilia, Zachary Sakati, the poet Rose Gold, and Diosa X are the poets we're going to hear from uh, the rest of 2024. So like, you, you know, you got to get in every single month uh, to this show to catch the poets and their stories and their readings so that you can um, you can support them and grab their books. All right. So Coach Jaw wants to know. <clears throat> so Jaw, you did not read her bio, apparently. Is she from New York or Philly? What part of Brooklyn? So she's from Philly, but she lives in, in Brooklyn right now. What part of Brooklyn are you in? Uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm from I'm Pitt, Pittsburgh originally, other side of the States. Um, but yeah, like, like Sh Shockey and I are actually both from Pittsburgh. Um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm in Ditmas Park, Brooklyn. I'm off of the Q train, if that, for those for whom that means something. So it's like Southeast Brooklyn. Yeah. So Jaws, Jaw says he's uh, yeah. right off the train. The subway system, the NYC subway system is its own kind of like language there, but yeah. It is, right? <laughs> This desert woman learned how to navigate the subway in a couple of days. So it was, it's all right. It's not so hard. Like, but yeah, it, without, without any sort of um, technology or apps, I don't know how anyone did it. Uh, the apps, the technology are so uh, what, important. What help here in, in, in NYC, if you just know, like, are you on the east side or the west side? That's like half the battle, honestly. Like, like know what train you take, know whether you're like east, in, at least in Manhattan, if you're like, you know, east of east of the park, west of the park, that is that is like half the battle, just kind of like learning it. And once you kind of get into the step with it, it's kind of just, it, it, it's just become second nature. Yeah, it was, it was lovely. I had such a great time in New York. Uh, I really want to go back and um, I want to do this whole food tour. Like, yeah, look. <laughs> It was funny, I, you know, I was taking Ramar Thompson at places and I was like, let's go into this place. Let's go into this place and play even in even in the Bronx where he lives. Like I was taking him into places he'd never been before and he lives there. <laughs> I'd like, let's go. Um, yeah, but I, I'm, ex I'm adventurous like that. All right, Quinn asks, how do you feel like your different creative selves, like writer, actor, et cetera, influence each other? That's that's a really good question. Um. I think there's so much overlap between it. I mean, I think when I've done like kind of, when I've done like playwriting, I think my writing does kind of have like a bit of more of like a lyrical or poetic bent to it in some in some ways. And I think really it's just kind of a means of like channeling your expression. You know, I think as, as an actor, when I'm playing a character or as a writer, you're like really bringing your whole self to it. You're, you're even if you're playing a role or writing about a specific topic, you're bringing your whole self and your whole life experience to inform and influence that. And I think as artists, you know, we really bring all of our selves to what we create in one way or another. It's just kind of a, 
a, a means of like the vehicle through which through which we we do it. And and I think that I really think anything is a source of like material or inspiration. So I think there's a lot of I, th I think art is just kind of inherently like multi genre and, and there's overlap just in general. Um, and then I was going to ask you, uh, uh, so I hope Quinn, I hope that answer, she's like, great answer. <laughs> and so, yes, uh, Quinn, I do have a couple people volunteering to do your manuscript, Emily, to review your manuscript. One of them is Emily. So, uh, at least we have a couple people willing. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, um, for the poets who are coming up, whether they've published a book already or they're publishing their first book. For the next round of poets, the next wave of people coming through, what is your advice for them? Um, I think I think I would say um, stay connected to what you love about it. I mean, I think that you are going to make a lot of discoveries during the process and and maybe kind of learn or do some things that might kind of like stretch your comfort zone a little bit but I but understand that that is that is part of it and just keep coming back to like why are you publishing this what do you love about it what do you want to say to the world and let that be really kind of what guides you you know when things can feel a little weird or uncertain and I think just have fun with it you know it's it's such a gift to get to you know to get to publish to get to share your work with the world and actually like put it into being so you know do your best to just kind of, you know, in, enjoy, enjoy every step of the way as much as you can. Oh, I love that. I love that. It is, it is a gift to be able to do this. And like, legacy work is the reason why we publish uh, people in, in their stories. So um, absolutely. Yes. Wise words. Uh, so uh, very good advice. I hope, I hope the poets who are listening or tuning in perhaps later uh, will heed that and, and soak that in and allow allow that advice uh emily last um last chance as we wrap up where can people find you follow you all that good stuff gonna drop my links in the chat again um i am a postmodern.psyche on instagram emily cordis on facebook i also have a link to my website mostly actor stuff but um yeah i'm pretty active on all those platforms you can follow along and see whatever i have coming up if you're in New York. I'm going to be doing a couple different shows this spring. So you, you can also kind of come and see me perform live. Um, yeah, just, just follow along, stay in touch. I'm always, I'm always pumped to meet new people and, you know, kind of, you know, share, share ideas and talk about stuff. So yeah, hit me up. Super exciting. Uh, you can grab her book, Queen of Swords, on the website. You can also read about Emily. You can read the reviews on her book as well um, on the website, redergreenbooks.com. Uh, go find her, follow her, postmodern dot psyche on IG, Emily Court is on Facebook, and you can find links to all of uh, her social medias on the website. I thank you so much, Emily, for coming through today for the author talk for March 2024. Y'all go buy her book. Come back next month. We will have Rick Spisak here in his incredible book, Stone Poetry. Uh, anything, Emily, you'd like uh, to announce or do or say before we close today? Um, I think I just want to thank you all for being here. Marissa, thank you so much for, you know, it for helping bring the second book to life it's it's an honor to be part of the red or green family so you know thank you for all that you do for for all of us out there thank you thank you so much uh it's been a blessing to have you and i just i can't wait to see what's next i'm so excited all right peace and blessings everyone thank you so much for coming out thank you so much to our featured reader emily cordes and her book queen of swords is available in march for five dollars off i uh, hope you all buy her book and uh we will see you next month peace and blessings everyone thanks so much have a good night bye, bye.